good evening everyone uh, today i'll be presenting uh, isolated electrical activity from the rods and cones it measures global electrical activity of the retina at the level of corneal surface for an electroretinogram there is a society called as iscev international society for clinical electrophysiology of vision which gives standards and protocols on how to go about uh, performing and interpreting an erg the electrophysiological changes usually precede structural abnormalities so it is an objective investigation and it always supplements clinical assessment which means that erg is not to be interpreted in isolation uh, indications for erg it helps in diagnosis of a disease like cone rod dystrophy it helps in prognosis of a disease in differentiating between stationary or progressive diseases and it also complements tests of retinal function where we already know the diagnosis and it complements us in uh, differentiating between certain types like ischemic versus non ischemic crv contraindications to performing an erg is presence of an active infection at the corneal surface or conjunctivitis corneal epithelial defects and if the patient is recent post operative uh, it is usually not recommended in patients with dense media opacities and in patients with extensive nystagmus so coming to the equipment it consists of three major components first is the electrodes we have three types of electrodes the recording electrode the reference electrode and the ground electrode there are certain electrodes which have which are known as bipolar electrodes which combine both the recording and the reference electrode together as a single component and we have the stimulator the stimulator the one that is shown in the right side is called as the gansfield stimulator the patient has to sit on a chair or a stool to uh, perform the uh, erg test on a gansfield stimulator the one on the lower side here this is a roland handheld stimulator this can be performed in patients like kids or in the operate, operating theater under anesthesia, uh, anesthesia and all these are connected to the digital recording system which contains a software for recording and uh, give, uh, preparing reports of the erg so coming to the different types of electrodes we have the baryon allen electrode which is more commonly used it is a type of bipolar electrode it is available in different sizes it is expensive and uncomfortable in the sense that it is a contact electrode where the electrode has to be placed inside the uh, conjunctival caldi sac so second one is the uh, jet electrode it's a single use monopolar electrode and it is expensive the baryon allen electrode can be sterilized and reused again so next we have the mayer's gold plated electrode which is again a single use electrode it is placed in the lower fornix with gold plate inside the uh, bulb uh, fornicial uh, in, inside the fornix and next we have the dtl electrode which consists of a fine silver nylon fiber it is again a single use electrode and it is expensive it costs around rupees 5000 for a single use and last we have the skin electrodes so most commonly that is used is baryon allen the second most common that is used here in sn is dtl electrodes so this is how a, the electrodes are placed in, uh, in in the patient and the patient is performing uh the erg test is being performed on a patient in a with a gansfield stimulator which is present in the left side and this is the roland handheld stimulator which is being performed for a kid so as said earlier iscev is international society for clinical electrophysiology of vision it provides standardized protocols and, uh, and it also ensures that uniformity and comparability between the uh, results of the erg exist between different labs coming to a full field erg it is also called as a standard erg or a flash erg the retinal potential is elicited by a brief flash of light which means there are multiple flashes of light performed and it elicits multiple wavelets which are uh, incorporated in the report that means the report does not co contain response from a single response it has the test is repeated at least thrice and all three wavelets are present in the report it elicits it elicits a mass response and evenly illuminated re, uh, retina 
which means that is the use of the gans field stimulator so the stimulator is placed in such a way that the entire retina is eliminated at a even rate uh, there is minimal contribution from the macula and at least 20% of the retina should be affected with the disease to elicit an abnormal response procedure first the pupil should be maximum dilated at least a minimum of 20 minutes of dark adaptation should be present before starting the ERG and dark to light. Dark to light means the patient sits in a dark environment at least for 20 minutes. Then first dark adapted ERG is performed and light flashes from minimum to maximum intensity. So the initial uh, flashes are of minimum intensity. Gradually the brighter flashes are presented. What if it is done the other way? If it is done the other way, the patient can become light adapted inadvertently. That is why the, the light is presented from minimum intensity to maximum intensity in that order and dark adapted first and then light adapted. So at least 30 minutes in room light after exposure to a bright stimulus. So most of the patients that undergo ERG also undergo other forms of investigations which includes a fundus photo or a fundus fluorescent angiography or even a normal uh, indirect ophthalmoscopic examination before going in for the test. So there should be at least 30 minutes of gap between the uh, exposure to a bright light and the patient starting the ERG procedure. So immediately after you cl clinically examine the patient, don't send the patient directly into the ERG room. There should be at least a gap of 30 minutes. And the, when sitting on a Gansfield uh, stimulator, the patient has to fixate on a target. If, if the patient has an extremely low vision and if the patient is unable to see the target, just instruct the patient to look straight ahead and not to move the eyeball. This is why patients with nystagmus can have abnormalities in the report. Coming to the protocols, these are six standard protocols that are performed in a standard full field ERG. This, these six standard protocols are defined by the ISEV. So first one is here we can see all these six waveforms that are elicited in a uh, report of a full field ERG. The first one is dark adapted. DA means dark adapted. 0 0.01 is the intensity of the flash, flash of light that is presented. So dark adapted 0 0.01 candle up second per meter square or it can also be called as a dark adapted single flash rod response. So basically the patient is dark adapted and the lowest intensity light is presented to the patient. So it elicits a B wave or I'll come to what is an A wave and B wave a little later. So it elicits one wave which peaks like this. And this wave is from the bipolar cells. It is a slow positive wave. Positive wave is we have a zero baseline. And from the zero baseline, whatever goes above the zero baseline is a positive wave. Whatever goes below the zero baseline is a negative wave. So this is from the rod system. So whatever is dark adapted is predominantly from the rod system. And reduced amplitude or prolonged implicit time amplitude is nothing but the from the zero baseline the till the peak of the uh, wave this this is measured in microvolts this is called as amplitude and implicit time is the time taken for the uh, peak to achieve for example from the presentation of the stimulus which is marked by the arrow from the presentation of the stimulus Till the time taken to the uh, for the for the wave to achieve its peak this is implicit time so it, there can be changes in the amplitude and the implicit time i'll come to the conditions that are affecting that a little later so this is the dark adapted 0.01 erg so coming to the next one the second one here we have the stimulus presentation which is marked by the arrow and there is a negative wave here which is the a wave and there is a positive wave here and there are few wavelets here Th that means it is not a single slope 
there are wavelets along the rise of the b wave so this is basically from uh, we this is elicited with a little brighter flash of 3.0 candela per meter square so initially we had 0.01 flash now this is a little brighter flash still in a dark adapted state so 3.0 uh, candela per meter square, candela seconds per meter square uh, flash is given. This elicits both responses from both the rods and cone system. So we call it as a mixed response or a combined response. So as we said, there is a negative, uh, uh, there is a A wave which is going be below the baseline and B wave which is going above the baseline. So these A waves are from rods and cone photoreceptors and B waves are from bipolar cells. So B for B b bipolar cells remember that way so usually this can be normal in conditions like optic nerve disease amblyopia where the inner retina and the photoreceptors are not much affected it can be subnormal in cases like early cone rod dystrophy panretinal photocoagulation media opacities Media opacity is because the entire light that is presented. We are already presenting the patient with a very dull flash of light. So this dull flash of light in the presence of a dense media haze might not elicit a good response. And coming to a negative response. What is a negative response? Negative response is basically, if you see this image, the B wave is larger compared to the A wave. Okay, so usually B wave is larger than the A wave. Or if you put B by A, it should be more than one normally because B is larger, A is smaller. So B by A should be more than one. If this B by A ratio is less than one or if the A wave, putting in other words, if the B wave is smaller than the A wave, that means it's a negative B wave. So this negative B wave is again divided into two negative positive and negative negative so negative positive is nothing but b wave is smaller than the a wave but it is still above the zero baseline which means it's a negative positive b wave the other thing is b wave is smaller than the a wave and it is below the zero baseline this is negative negative b wave okay so coming to the next thing which is a dark adapted 10 candela seconds per meter square response so we have this wave here if you see the difference between this and this the a wave is quite larger in amplitude and smaller in the peak time so this is again a mesopic response or combined rods and cone response or enhanced rod and cone response a wave is again from the rod and cone photoreceptors. B wave is from bipolar cells, B for B. So here, better measure of rod photoreceptor function due to short peak time and a larger amplitude. Here, because the A wave is of larger amplitude, we can detect certain things a little early with this response, mostly of rod photoreceptors. OK. So it is useful in patients with dense cataract. Why patients with dense cataract? Because we are presenting with a brighter flash. So even though there is a dense cataract, this brighter flash is going to elicit a better response compared to the previous two responses that we saw. And it is also useful in patients with small or non-dilating pupils. And A wave and B wave both can be reduced in dysfunction of rod photoreceptors. Sometimes A wave can be spared, but B wave can be reduced, which is post transduction or post photo transduction or inner retinal disease. Putting it in simple words, if there is a photoreceptor dysfunction, outer retinal dysfunction, A wave is going to be affected. If there is an inner retinal dysfunction, B wave is going to be affected. Okay, so these are the two main things that you need to keep in mind. And if there is no A wave at all, the B wave is going to be flat. Without an A wave, B wave cannot occur. OK, so coming to the next response, which is dark adapted oscillatory potentials. So 
initially when speaking about this 3.0 erg 3.0 flash i was talking about these wavelets here along the rise of the b wave so these wavelets are these oscillatory potentials so it is basically these wavelets on the rise of the b wave which are separated using a filter and presented to us as oscillatory potentials usually oscillatory potentials will have four peaks one two three four out of which the last peak may be little smaller compared to the previous three peaks so this is normal so this is the stimulus onset and there are four peaks okay so four positive peaks it is sensitive to effects of retinal ischemia so in conditions with uh, vascular occlusions and all these oscillatory potentials are going to be lost okay so coming to the next which is la la is light adapted so far we saw dark adapted so in dark adapted we saw four responses the remaining two standard protocols are light adapted so we have two things which is light adapted 3.0 candela per meter square and the light adapter 30 hertz flicker so after a dark adapted erg is performed patient is to be light adapted for 10 minutes in normal room light and this photo uh, this light adapted response is basically from the cone system so far whatever we saw here the first one was from predominantly only rod system these three are from mixed response rod and cone system these two are from only cone system okay so a wave is from again photoreceptors b wave is from bipolar cells b for b again i am repeating this again and again so that it gets it's easier for you to remember so if you see this this and this what is the difference that you can make out anyone everything has a sharp peak everything is smaller the amplitudes are comparatively smaller than these so this does not mean that it is reduced a light adapted 30 erg normal response will have shorter amplitudes compared to the dark adapted responses okay so this is normal again we have a wave and a b wave a wave from photoreceptors or outer retina b wave from inner retina or bipolar cells okay coming to the light adapted 3.0 flicker this is basically presenting stimulus of bright flashes of light at a frequency of 30 hertz that means there is a rapid flicker of light and we elicit a rapid. so this usually is from the cone system why because the rods cannot respond to or the rods does not recover from a bright flash that immediately after a flash of light so only the cone system can respond in a faster manner that is why this flash of light uh, response is elicited only from the cone system so why this magic number 30 this has been accepted worldwide by the after um, the consensus of the iscev okay so even if you give flashes of light at 40 hertz we are going to elicit the same response but this cannot be compared between one lab and the other between one machine and the other that is why this this 30 has been a fixed number as prescribed by the iseab or standard so just a summary or revision we have stimulus a wave which is below the zero baseline from photoreceptors we have b wave which is from bipolar cells which is a positive wave and then we have the oscillatory potentials which is from the amacrine cells nothing but the along the slope of the b wave same thing so coming to the waveform analysis i already explained this in the beginning so amplitude is nothing but the maximum light induced electrical response or the from zero baseline the height of the peak height of the peak of the a wave from zero baseline is a wave amplitude but for the b wave instead of taking from zero baseline the b wave starts from the from here so for the b wave amplitude it is taken from the 
rough of the a wave till the peak of the b wave this is b wave amplitude okay so implicit time is the time needed for electrical response to reach maximum amplitude so this is the implicit time so from the stimulus onset till the time taken for the a wave to reach its peak this is a wave implicit time and this is b wave implicit time and then what is latency latency is the time from stimulus onset to response onset so stimulus was presented here but the wave started here so this time is called as latency okay latency is only present for the a wave and not for the b wave why because it starts along with the peak of the a wave so there is no latency here okay so next coming to the b b wave to a wave ratio which is an index of inner retinal to outer retinal function normally b wave is larger than the a wave okay so the ratio should be above 1 again small amplitude reduced number of functioning cells or cell death and delayed time to peak means sick or dysfunctional cells so right now if i say everyone to stand up half of you stand and half of you don't which means the half who are sitting are still sleeping okay so if i say everyone to shout something you all think why is this guy telling us to shout in the middle of a class take some time then shout okay that is the delay time that which means you are lazy to shout or you are waiting to shout okay that is delay time which means all of you are still present all of you are still awake but you are dysfunctional okay if half of you leave out of the class that is non functioning or death of cells which is going to produce a lesser response so lesser response less number of functioning cells delayed response means less functional cells or dysfunctional cells so complication of a full field erg by the placement of the electrodes patient can have or elaborations so after completing the erg when you are reviewing the patient patient can say after the erg test i am having watering i am having irritation burning sensation for the patient on slit line see again look for corneal aberrations or epithelial defects and treat it accordingly because it is sometimes not for all patient but sometimes this can occur by the placement and removal of the so what are the interfering factors first is age so as the age increases the electrical activity reduces need that is the need for age matched normative data so you can't compare an erg of a 10 year old with a 80 year old though it is done in the same machine by the same person by the same protocol you cannot you cannot compare both and you cannot uh, non dilating pupil what happens the entire retina is not il eliminated by the stimulator so you can have a reduced response electrode based artifacts with the, uh, due to improper placement of electrodes are due to unstable fixation you can have electrode based artifacts which are seen as noises along the waveforms and eye movement eye movement can again cause artifacts and usually they say for refractive errors should not affect an erg but large uncorrected refractive errors can still show a reduced responses because the entire light that you are throwing is not going to reach the retinal surface in a effective way it is going to be blurred defocused everything so next media haze i have spoken about media haze earlier effect of anesthesia so when you are doing erg under anesthesia or eua examination under anesthesia and then you do an erg the response is going to be little different if you use dissociative anesthesia like ketamine the response is going to be different or reduced and different machines so you perform a erg here you go out take the patient somewhere else perform erg on a different machine the response is going to be different or you perform an erg here 10 years down the lane you get a new machine you perform erg on the same patient again you are going to get a different response because there is each machine behaves in a different way so each uh, you should have normative data for that particular machine for that particular age group to compare the erg so i think i've covered the basics of erg so far now here are a few case presentations or few case scenarios which i'll be showing to understand the 
differences or the abnormalities that we get in ERG report a little better. So this is a patient, 26 year old male who came with defective vision both during daytime and nighttime. He had a vision of three by 16, both the eyes and his color vision was defective. He read the, only the first plate of Asia Rasha in both the eyes. So can someone say what do you see in the fundus? Whatever you can appreciate. Anyone? This is a little longer class, so be fast. Is it visible? Yeah, the media is clear. Disc appears normal shape, size, color, and normal AV ratio. Uh, the right eye uh, in the macular area, I can see some pigmentation. Mm. I can also see some pigments in the inferior quadrant mm. and some RP alterations all over. Mm. So the entire in, in the background area. retina appears in a granular fashion. Granular, yeah. Okay. So this is the ERG of the patient. So who can interpret this for me? I presented only one eye here, but both the eyes are almost similar. If I put everything together in the same slide, everything is appearing smaller. So I am concentrating on one eye. So if you see here, the dark adapted 0 0.01 ERG, you see multiple wavelets here. What are these multiple wavelets? Oscillatory potentials are on the rise of the V wave. I'm saying here, there are three waves that you see here. I spoke about this, these three waves in the beginning. What are these? The test is performed multiple times. Test is performed multiple times and all three are given here. And the average is taken. Okay. So we have a B wave. So is this B wave normal, abnormal? Normal or abnormal? Amplitude is reduced. Amplitude. How do you say it is reduced? We can't say. We need a normal ERG to compare. Age matched, mission matched, normative data to compare it. So compared with this, we have to see. So B wave of this is slightly maybe reduced. Coming to the dark adapted 3.0 ERG, A wave is definitely reduced. B wave is variable. Each time there is a different response. Coming to the oscillatory potentials, we have one, two, three, four, four peaks are present. Coming to the 10.0 ERG compared with this, A wave is reduced, B wave is again reduced, okay. Coming to the light adapted, this wave is not seen at all, right. Both A and B waves are reduced. This flicker response, again, the peak and trough is not seen. So this means it is affecting the rod system. It is affecting the cone system. Cone system is more affected than the rod system. Okay. So this is a case of cone rod dystrophy. Compared to the history before, patient had color vision defect, defective, color vision was defective, and the fundus appearance. Okay, this is a case of cone rod dystrophy. So we are supposed to, when seeing an ERG, we are supposed to look whether it is involving only the rod system, only the cone system, or both rods and cone system. Then we are going to look whether it is going to involve only the outer retina or the photoreceptors, or is it also involving the inner retina? Okay, so the next case, 32 year old male, again vision three by 16, both the eyes. Again, here also color vision is defective and patient says defective vision is more during daytime. Fundus and the autofluorescence. So if you see the fundus closely, there is some alteration here in the, around the foveal area. It is not normal, definitely. When we take an autofluorescence, we have a bullseye appearance. A ring of hyper autofluorescence around the fovea. Who can interpret this for me? Anyone who has the mic? So the uh, dark adapted 0 0.01 ERG, uh, mm. that B wave appears to be uh, normal as compared to the, mm. while the the A wave or the amplitude of the A wave is also normal in dark adapted 3 ERG. Mm. The amplitude is normal and the implicit time is also appears to be normal. Mm. In the light adapted ERG, no, oscillatory potential. Sorry, the oscillatory potential appears to be, um, the amplitude appears to be minimally reduced as compared to the normal. Of oscillatory potential does not have amplitude, so it is basically the number of peaks. Number of, yeah. okay. so number of peaks appears this to is be normal. Again, dark adapted 10, 0. Again, A and B waves are normal. Normal. Coming to the light adapted. In the light adapted, the 
the waveforms in that a the a wave and the b wave appears to be extinguished that response is hmm. not seen not seen so it's mainly involving the cone rod cone system so the rod system is unaffected we don't see any gross abnormality in the vascular status only the cone system is affected okay so since there is no a wave here the b wave is not going to appear if there is if a wave is absent b wave is definitely going to be absent so this is a case of cone dystrophy isolated cone dystrophy the rod system is completely not affected okay so coming to this you will see this patient these kind of patients day in and day out so just by seeing this fundus diagnosis everyone will say retinitis pigmentosa most commonly there can be other differentials for pigmentary retinopathy i agree but still most common diagnosis retinitis pigmentosa this diagnosis if we see closely again there is an area of atrophy okay atrophic macula or atrophic fovea with again granular appearing background retina with rp mucling this is also a patient with retinitis pigmentosa and there can al always be differentials for this so erg can help in that what do you see here anyone else so rod response or dark adapted response no a wave no b wave nothing oscillatory potentials obviously since there is no b wave there is no slope of b wave so there is no recordable oscillatory potential light adapted again is flat so this is affecting both the rod system and the cone system and there is no response that is elicited which is common with retinitis pigmentosa so if you get such kind of an erg it does not always mean retinitis pigmentosa there are also other differentials for an extinguished erg so extinguished erg can be present in choroideremia can be present in retinal aplasia where the there is no nothing to elicit a a wave or a b wave ophthalmic artery occlusion so what happens in a central retinal artery occlusion someone with the mic pass on the mic what happens with the central retinal artery occlusion reduced b wave hmm. why reduced b wave b wave is the response of inner retina on hmm. central retina so in a central retinal artery occlusion only the inner retina is affected so there will be reduced b wave and the and electronegative waveforms will get oscillatory potentials is going to be lost so ophthalmic artery occlusion the entire thing will be gone it will be extinguished in chronic total retinal detachment what happens in acute retinal detachment what is it going to be there what is going to be there in acute total rd both a and b waves will be reduced so that your know, amplitudes will be grossly reduced but it is not going to be flat because even though retina is detached it will still elicit some response patient still has some vision right patient still has hand movements or some vision 1 by 60 vision even with total rt acute so the amplitudes will be reduced but there will still be waveforms it is not going to be flat so the next patient 29 year old female has nystagmus and defective night vision patient gives a family history that elder sister also has similar complaints bcva 6 by 18 n6 in both eyes and us the image is appearing like this but this is a normal fundus the so patient has normal fundus nystagmus defective night vision family history and 68 and 6 vision differentials why does stationery come here i did not give any history of stationery or progressive can th these two sisters live in the same place patient can still have vitamin a deficiency i did not give anything any history related to stationery or progressive hmm? so don't jump on to the diagnosis okay you can have differentials before sending the patient for erg so this is the patient's erg dark adapted response b wave definitely reduced so this is affecting the rods dark adapted 30 erg a wave is okay b wave grossly reduced in amplitude it is below the zero baseline which means it's a negative negative b wave 
oscillatory potentials appear abnormal. The arc adapter 10 0 ERG again, A wave is okay, B wave grossly reduced, negative negative B wave. Light adapted grossly normal. Okay, both the peaks are normal. So, what is this diagnosis? It is affecting the inner retina rod system. Okay, patient is a 29 year old defective night vision. This is a case of complete ASNB. So, what is complete, incomplete are all differentiated based on ERG findings. So congenital stationary night blindness can be divided into normal fundus and patients with normal fundus and patients with abnormal fundus. Normal fundus is further divided into Ricks type and schubert bonstein type, which is further divided into complete and incomplete. And abnormal fundus, there are two varieties, so which is disease and fundus albi punctatus. So this is what is the ERG finding that we are going to see in various types of CSNB. If you see this slide at one go, everything is going to be confusing. So Rick's type, rod photoreceptor defect, so normal photopic responses. Complete CSNB is a subtype of schubert bonstein type. Again, normal cone responses. Incomplete CSNB, photopic is also reduced. So out of these three, if the photopic is affected, it is going to be incomplete. At one go, see the photopic. If it is affected, it is incomplete CSNB. To differentiate between the types of CSNB, I'm saying in, in a nutshell. Of course, there are other features. But in a nutshell, if the photopic is going to be normal, it is either of these two. If the photopic is abnormal, it is incomplete CSNB. If the photopic is normal, then you see whether both A and B are reduced or A is preserved and only B is reduced. If only B is reduced, it is going to be complete. Like we saw in the previous example, A wave was preserved, only B was reduced, and photopic was normal, which is complete, A S and B. If photopic was normal and if the A wave was also affected, it is going to be Rick's type C S N B and if photopic is also affected, it is going to be incomplete CSN. OK, so if you see the ERG alone, consider this example. Photopic is going to be reduced, and both A and B waves are going to be reduced. So incomplete CSNB can also be interpreted as cone rod dystrophy. Right, cone rod dystrophy will also have photopic reduced, scotopic reduced, A wave, B wave reduced. It can happen. So never interpret ERG in isolation. Okay, so this is just an example of the differences of what I spoke before. Okay, same thing. So this is another ERG of a patient with CSNB. I'm giving you the diagnosis. We are going to subtype this. So photopic affected, scotopic negative negative B wave, A wave is also definitely reduced. So A is affected, B is affected, rods are affected, cones are affected. This is a case of incomplete CSN. So coming to the next example or next case, patient is a seven year old child, has a best corrected visual acuity of six by six and six with color vision normal. And this was the fundus. Of course, optos is pseudo color, but there is some abnormality here. What is it? Clue, we are talking about CSN. So there is a golden metallic sheen that is seen from the entire fundus in both the eyes. OK, so coming to our ERG for this patient. Comparing it with the normal. Single flash all response. B wave is not that much seen. It is definitely reduced. The arc adapter 3.0. Both A and B waves are reduced. 
V wave is smaller than the A wave. Obviously, you have to see this numbers, amplitudes. Okay, you get it in millivolts here. So you have to compare the number, whether which is smaller, which is larger. Or you can see the wavelet also say waveforms and also see oscillatory potentials are normal. Dark adapted 10 0 flash. Even with the brightest flash, it is reduced. It's a, it is a negative negative B wave, reduced A wave, phone responses predominantly normal. So what is this and this? Does this look abnormal to you? This has a larger peak, this has a smaller peak. Because this is not age match normal. I'm just showing one normal for all my cases. This is not an age match normal. Ideally, it has to be compared with an age matched normal. Okay, since I don't have an age match normal here, I'm showing this. So this is still a normal photopic. So this is a patient with Oguchi's disease. So Oguchi's disease, negative V wave. Photopic is normal. Scotopic, negative B wave with reduced A wave. Okay. And obviously, we saw in the fundus the golden metallic sheen appearance. So, this is the abnormal fundus with CSNB. This is the abnormality that we are looking at. So, again, if you clearly see this ERG was similar to Rick's type CSNB. So, if you interpret the ERG in isolation, we are never going to arrive at a diagnosis. I told about the abnormal fundus. So ERG is going to have a reduced A wave, negative B wave, extinguished single flash rod response, and a normal photopic response with characteristic fundus appearance, or what is that phenomenon called as? Yes. OK. So these type of patients, when you see in the clinic, you are supposed to advise them for prolonged dark adaptation. So what is the normal dark adaptation that we usually do for an ERG? I spoke in the beginning. Hmm? 20 minutes of dark adaptation is what is usually performed. So these patients have to undergo three to four hours of dark adaptation. OK. And then you have to repeat the ERG, which will show improvement in the amplitudes. So these V waves are going to improve, but it is still going to be negative. What if you compare before and after, it is going to improve, but it is still going to be negative. In a patient with Oguchi's disease. So this is a 16-year-old male. Patient came for a regular checkup. Mission was 6-5 and 6 in both eyes with this fundus. What is there in the fundus? I think you people are well versed in just seeing the fundus and seeing the diagnosis. Or you have seen my PPT before. I don't know. So we see plenty of white dots. OK. This is the routine normal, the same ERG that I have been showing from before. And this is the ERG of the patient. What is there? Single flash rod responses, almost flat. Though they've marked A and B, can someone identify the B wave here? No, it is almost extinguished. So single flash rod response is extinguished. Dark adapted 3.0 ERG, reduced A and B waves. Oscillatory potentials normal. Dark adapted 10.0 flash ERG, again reduced A and B waves. This is almost touching the zero baseline. Light adapted, normal. So this is after standard dark adaptation of 20 minutes. OK, for Oguchi's disease, what we spoke, after prolonged dark adaptation, what happens to the ERG? Amplitudes are going to improve, but it is still going to be negative. So what happens in this? This is after prolonged dark adaptation after four hours. What happened to our ERG? What is this? Normal B wave. A wave amplitude has significantly improved. B wave is also improved. Oscillatory potentials are normal. Again, everything is going to be returning back to normal. So this is a case of 
fundus i'll be punctatus why do you need to differentiate this because it's a stationary disease so you can prognosticate to the patient yes you need not worry about this this is going to be stationary so we have the same fundus with the same erg but even after four hours of dark adaptation if nothing improved if it is the same probable diagnosis retinitis punctata albicans same fundus same history with erg which is reduced and even after prolonged dark adaptation there is no improvement in the amplitudes okay so this prolonged dark adaptation is not performed as a standard this has to be requested or only when you mention certain differentials they are going to perform this okay so you should know when to advise for a prolonged dark adaptation so the next case 12 year old boy presenting with defective vision in both eyes fundus showed skytic changes in the inferior retina oct showed cystic and skytic changes in both eyes vision 6 by 18 and 6 in the right eye and 6 by 24 and 6 in the left eye patient is a boy important to note coming to the erg again comparing it with normal again for all my, most of my cases i'm presenting only the erg of one eye so that it is easier to understand so what is here p wave single flash rod response predominantly okay dark adapted 30 p wave is reduced it is a negative b wave a wave is significantly larger than our b wave okay so b by a ratio is going to be less than one we have to see these amplitudes also oscillatory potentials are okay again dark adapter 10 0 erg b wave is negative light adapted response is going to be okay so again this erg is similar to incomplete csnb but this is a case of excellent retinoscisis so clinical oct and the zrg helps help us in coming to a diagnosis so the next patient 50 year old male defective vision in left eye for the past one month patient was a known systemic hypertensive fundus right eye normal left eye plenty of hemorrhages cotton spots patient of central retinal vein occlusion so in so much with so much hemorrhages FFA is not going to be of much use because of block fluorescence. So ERG can be complementary to our diagnosis and treatment in differentiating from ischemic versus non-ischemic CRV. So coming to our ERG, what is there? What is there? Oscillatory potentials are lost. It signifies there is some vascular component or ischemia present and again both rods and cone system is affected because the entire retina is affected by crvo so both rods and cones are affected both a wave and b wave are affected okay this is a case of ischemic crvo central retinal vein occlusion so 60 year old male history of trauma with a metal wire one year ago what do you see here some rusty deposits pigment dispersion both on the corneal endothelium iris everywhere ultrasound what is there A high reflective echo causing back shadowing okay obviously low gain is not shown here 
So this is a patient with foreign body. Here I am showing both the eyes. I am not showing a normal of another patient, so I am showing both the eyes comparison. So this is the, the one on top is the right eye, one on one below is the left eye. If you actually see here, it will be written R E L E. Okay, so in a single sheet, we get both the right eye and the left eye next next to each other. So right eye single flash rod response flat, left eye normal. Again, both A and B waves are reduced. Left eye normal. Oscillatory potentials lost. Dark adapter 100 ERG again significantly reduced A and B waves compared to the other eye. Light adapted again, lost, extinguished. Okay, so this is a patient with intraocular foreign body in the late stages. So what happens in the early stages? What is ERG? ERG elicits an electrical response, right? Presence of a metallic foreign body inside the eye is going to going to increase the potentials so in an early stage we are going to have a super normal erg everything is going to be spiked up but in the late stages as everything degenerates degrades we are going to have a flat erg or extinguished erg so this is a late stage of intraocular foreign body as said earlier, retained metallic foreign bodies, iron or copper, B wave amplitudes compared to the other eye, if it is less than 50%, is going to definitely need treatment. So unlikely to improve unless foreign body is removed. Early stages, there is going to be a supernormal response, increased A wave and a reduced B wave. And late stages, there is going to be a flat ERG. Okay. So coming to the next case, 52-year-old male, complaints of nectalopia for the past eight days 52 year old eight days night blindness or nectalopia history of jaundice for one week patient is a known alcoholic since many years recently diagnosed to have alcoholic liver disease fundus any abnormalities in the fundus fundus is normal autofluorescence normal so acquired nyctalopia erg what happened to the cone responses grossly okay rod responses significantly reduced okay this is a patient with vitamin a deficiency Okay, so serum vitamin A levels was significantly reduced. Patient was diagnosed with alcoholic liver disease, cirrhosis. So the vitamin A stores were depleted. Patient had vitamin A deficiency and he then developed nectalopia and then presented to us with acquired night blindness. So this was before treatment. After starting the patient with oral vitamin A supplements. This is Three weeks later, ERG has completely become normal. Okay. So limitations of ERG, if less than 20% of the retina is affected, patient can have a normal full field ERG. Okay. So patient can be legally blind. What is legal blindness? Less than 6 by 60 in the better eye. Okay. So patient can be legally blind with a normal ERG. Patient can also have an extinguished ERG. There's a spelling mistake there. A patient can have an extinguished ERG with a vision of six by six. Okay. So I have not covered ISEV approved extended protocols like dark adapted or S-cone, photopic on or photopic negative response. These are all certain extended protocols that are approved by the ISEV, which means ISEV did not give these protocols in the beginning. There are multiple people, researchers who started performing this and then got the approval from ISEV for these extended protocols. 
So these extended protocols is, have, have not covered in this class. And multifocal ERG I have not covered in this class. And pattern ERG I have not covered in this class. So multifocal ERG is basically for, for the macular area and predominantly the cone system. Pattern ERG is mainly for the specific macular area. Extended protocols are supposed to be used for specific certain diagnosis where you want to confirm the diagnosis. You perform certain extended ERG along extended protocols along with the normal full field ERG. So take home points when you see an ERG, before seeing an ERG, see the patient, see the findings, correlate other clinical findings and investigations, then come to ERG. When you see an ERG, grossly observe whether it is affecting only the rod system or cone system or if it is a panretinal disease. Next, identify whether it is the photoreceptors or the inner retina, which area is being affected. Then based on the implicit time and the amplitudes, you will know whether it is a dysfunctional or reduced functional cells, which means if a patient who has undergone PRP, three settings of PRP, go somewhere else, comes back to you. They have advised ERG, stating that there are some bony spicules in between the PRP marks. You do an ERG and you get reduced amplitudes. What does that mean? It could still be due to the PRP. So only if the entire retina is eliciting a response, you'll get these normative data matched amplitudes. If you are ablating the retina with PRP, most of the cells are dead there. That is not going to elicit a normal amplitude ERG. So the amplitudes are going to be reduced in, th in that patient. So always correlate clinically whether this reduction in amplitude is correlating with my disease or my differential or not. Okay, so compare with the HMASH normative data. Never interpret in isolation and have differentials before advising ERG and which I have been saying from the beginning clinical correlation.